Hello guys, and welcome back to another Jonah Central tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an Oreo cookie in Blender quickly and easily. Let's get right into it. This cube already knows it doesn't exist. Delete it. Go to Mesh and add in a circle. Now if you go into Edit Mode and press F, you'll fill in that face. Awesome. Now we can go to Shading. Create a new material and add in an image texture. Now, in the description of this video, I've provided you three different Oreo maps that I made myself, including a normal map, a displacement map, and a transparency map. I'm going to just be using the displacement map because I'm not a big fan of normal maps because I've had issues with them, and transparency, you can't make a 3D cookie, so it's good for when you're making a low poly object, but in this case, we're not doing that. All right, open up the Oreo displacement. Awesome. Now add in a bump node. We're going to plug the normal of the bump into the normal of the principled BSDF and plug the color of the Oreo height map into the height of the bump node. Awesome. Now if you go into rendered view and bring this light down to the side, as you can see, you can't see any Oreo. And here's why. you got to go into edit mode, press U and unwrap it, and as you can see the Oreo is now projected properly onto our circle. Nice. Now to make this look more like an Oreo cookie, add in a mix RGB node. And now add in a noise texture. Plug the fact of the noise texture into the color too, and as you can see, we've got something going on. Now we can change the detail of that noise texture up to 16, and we can change mix to add. Now reduce that fact to about 0.1, and as you can see, we now have slight displacement and bump, which you would normally see in a cookie. Nice! Change the strength down to about 0.3, that's what I've had the best time with. And we can change the roughness to about 0.8 and the specular to 0.4. Now for the base color, I found that the best that worked for me was a value of 0.3, a saturation of 0.2, and a hue of 0.06. I feel like that gave me the best Oreo cookie color. Nice. Now, let's make this thing 3D. If we go into edit mode and extrude this downwards, as you can see, our displacement map is turned inside out. Now, it took me a while to figure this out, but I figured it out. The issue is, a face in Blender has the outside and the inside. And if you go to overlays and turn on face orientation, as you can see, red means that's the inside face. So our cookie is essentially inside out. To fix that, make sure you have the bottom face selected. Just move it to the top. If you see your cookie turn blue, you did something right. Awesome. Now, if we take a look at the side of this cookie, as you can see, it's not looking too hot. To fix this, go to the Material Properties tab and add in a new material slot and add in Material 001. Now click the 2 here to turn it into its own private material. Delete the Oreo height map and the add node and just plug the noise texture into the height of the bump map. Now to actually apply this to the cookie, go into edit mode, go to face select, hold alt, click one of these edges and it'll select a ring around the cookie. You can then click assign and as you can see it's still not looking fantastic. If we add in a mapping node and a texture coordinate node and decrease this scale on the z-axis, as you can see, it's starting to look normal. Now, it's still looking a bit strong, so you can turn that strength down to about 0.1. Awesome! Before we shade smooth this, go into edit mode, control R, and create a ring around the edge of the cookie, and scale it up to make those more rounded edges. We can now shade smooth it. Awesome! Now this is looking like a good Oreo cookie. But it isn't an Oreo cookie without the filling on the inside. To make that, go back to layout and add in a cylinder. Scale the cylinder down on the z-axis until it's looking about the proper thickness of an Oreo cookie filling. I also recommend scaling down the filling on the x and y-axis just a bit so it doesn't overlap the cookie. That looks about good for me. I might have made mine a bit thick, but it's fine. So if we shade smooth this bad boy, it's not looking too great. So I recommend creating two loop cuts going to the very edges of the cylinder to make it look a bit nicer. Go to shading 
and click New. We've created another material, big surprise. Add in a bump node and plug the normal of that bump into the normal of the principal BSDF. Now add in a noise texture. Plug the FAC into the height of that bump node and once again add in a mapping and a texture coordinate node. Now we're once again, you can see a pattern happening. We decrease the scale on the z-axis and increase the scale of detail on the noise texture. Now this doesn't look like filling, it looks like stone. So what we're going to want to do is decrease that strength to about 0.1. To make this look a little bit more realistic and more like filling, turn the subsurface to about 1 and under subsurface radius change each of these values to 1 because we do not want it looking like human skin, unless you do. I don't know why, but we don't judge here. So you can go back to layout and select the top cookie. Now add in a modifier and add in a mirror modifier and change the axis to Z. And as you can see, it is projecting on the Z axis, but it's connected to the top cookie. So find out the name of your filling object, which in my case, it is just cylinder. So for the mirror object, change that to cylinder. And as you can see, it projects the top cookie perfectly and symmetrically on the bottom of the filling. So if we increased the size of the filling and moved the top cookie up, the bottom would correspond accordingly. Now, you might be thinking that there's one more really weird, really difficult step, but to your surprise, we are finished. We have now successfully made an Oreo cookie that you can use in your projects. Now, once again, if you, if you haven't been following this tutorial and you want to, I've provided the links to the displacement map, normal map, and transparency map all in the description. It'll take you to my imager page and you can download the images through that. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this was a good tutorial. I hope you have a great day and thank you for watching.